Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly update. Seems like in these updates I spend so much time in front of BioCubes as I have since we've started these updates. And today is no different. Um, we are giving away a BioCube this month and I want you all to know about it. You do have to come into the store to enter to win. Uh, you get one entry per visit to the store which basically gave you 31 opportunities this month uh, to put your name in the hat. However, while the fair is going on through the 24th of this month, if you come in the store any day of the fair, uh, you get three entries to put into the hat. So it's going to give you three more opportunities uh, every day than you normally would have. Um, this is our effort to get you in here, uh, even with the fair going on, and to give you more opportunities to possibly win this BioCube. It is the BioCube with the sand, with the rock, with the water, so it is a complete setup. So, if you have time uh, between now and the end of the month, uh, you get an entry per time you come in, but three right now while the fair is going on each day. So, uh, if you want your odds to climb, you definitely want to do that. Now, let's get on to the update. Okay, I wanted to show this because this is a color that we don't typically have in here. Now, this stand and canopy is sold. It was custom done for a gentleman uh, who seems most happy with it, but it is so beautiful. Um, that I wanted you to see what we are capable of and uh, anything that you need. These were set for Red Sea Lights uh, so that they can be custom designed any way you want to. If you are in the market for a stand and canopy with Christmas coming up, uh, I, with the time that we have left, which isn't a lot because it takes a little while to make these, but there are a few more opportunities to get in. You can see the slow closed doors with the hinges that he does. It is phenomenal. Uh, the color schemes and things that uh, our very own Chad can do with these things. So I wanted to show that off this morning before we got onto the video. Okay, one more little tidbit of information before we get onto the fish. Uh, and this is a little bit soon, but it'll be here before you know it. November the 13th, uh, that is a Saturday at two o'clock, we are gonna have someone coming in that does high-end aquascaping for planet aquariums. He is going to do two aquascapes and it is a class-like uh, presentation. So if you've been in the market for a planted tank and you're not the most artistic or you are artistic but want to see uh, what somebody who does this for a living does, uh, you definitely want to come in on November the 13th. Francois Nolet, which is our ELOS rep, in America is actually bringing him in. It is a private show um, and we will be giving away one of the tanks that he does. I'll tell you more about that as the weeks to come and I will remind you in the videos to come as well but it will be here before you know it. That's November the 13th at 2 o'clock here at Fishy Business. Okay, the first fish on our freshwater list are the black skirt tetras. These came in really nice with a lot of really flowy fins. Uh, they are the long fin black skirts and they are beautiful. This is a very, very hardy tetra that can cycle a tank uh, and just all over a great fish to have in a community tank. For you Pleco Affectionados, the King Tiger Plecostomus. I got one of those in this week. Beautiful fish. Uh, he knows he's being filmed at the moment, but really, really cool, really cool markings on the body uh, and a great pleco. Blue-eyed lemon plecostomus also came in this week. Uh, one of the cool things about them, I've got about six, maybe eight in this tank, is that every one of them has a different uh, vibrance of yellow. So not all of them are the exact same color and they are really cool. They're a fairly active pleco. Uh, and just really, really cool, nice statement, nice little pop of color, uh, great in a community tank. And they eat algae. A barb we don't typically have, the filamentosa barb, is a really cool barb that just came in. Uh, obviously noted by the dot on its body. Very cool in terms of how they school, uh, very hardy. You wouldn't want to keep these in a planet aquarium, but if you just have a normal aquarium and want some high-end activity, the filamentosa barbs could be great. All right, neon rosy barbs are back in stock. We get neon rosy barbs whenever they're available, but I can honestly tell you they don't all come in with the true neon part of the rosy barb that's in their name. Uh, these, however, every single one of them came in with that electric neon orange 
Um, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And if you want a great pop of color with a fish that's incredibly hardy, that will go in a lot of different tank applications, these go fast. They're great to school, they're not that expensive. So if you want a pop of color and you want a high activity, this is a great bar. Something that I just had to show you this week, a customer who had raised rainbows for a while uh, brought these rainbows in this week. Now you can see, based on my hand, just what a rainbow will do as far as growth. The color, look at that Parkinsoni. Uh, the turquoise rainbows have an electric turquoise to them. They are absolutely phenomenal and they will still get a bit larger uh, in terms of girth. They'll grow out. Uh, they're not going to get much bigger physically, but they'll get bigger from a, from a body standpoint. Um, absolutely beautiful and you can see what the end result of keeping rainbows can do. So when I'm showing you rainbows in videos and they don't have all that color yet, know this is where they're headed and they are stunning show rainbows. Peruvian Altum Angels came in this week. Uh, it's pretty rare that we have these. They have got some serious size. You can kind of look at my hand based on, use that as a reference. I have a pretty fat hand. Um, but these are, uh, these are great angels. They're very hardy. Uh, they don't have, or you won't have to, to experience some of the angel disease that a lot of angels bring in with them. Um, if you're in the market for some hardy, beautiful angelfish, I've got them this week. Quite possibly the largest blood parrot I have ever had and have ever seen came in this week. Uh, I was raised to perfection uh, by the gentleman that brought it to us and he simply outgrown his tank. Uh, this is a great fish, very active, very alert, very aware of our presence in the store as he tends to follow us around from way up high in this tank. Uh, but if you're in the market for a show quality blood parrot, it doesn't carry a show quality price, and you've got a big tank, this is a great fish. That's my hand with him. Uh, but as you can see, he's very aggressive. I also had a customer bring in one large electric blue Acara. You don't usually see them as perfect as this. Uh, we certainly don't order them like this. They're much, much smaller, about a third the size when, when I show them in videos. Uh, but this is a show quality electric blue Acara. This is not the most aggressive cichlid. Uh, it is a little bit aggressive, but it's not super aggressive. So you can get away with it in a semi-aggressive um, to almost communal type tank, depending on the size of the fish that are in there. Uh, but a beautiful fish, beautiful turquoise on a freshwater fish. A type of shovel nose cat I don't have all the time is the Lima shovel nose. Uh, I've got in, I think, four or five of them this week came in. Uh, these are very young, they will get big, um, but they're absolutely cool and in great shape. Excellent clown loaches this week. Uh, just phenomenal. You can see the size and see how they color up. Uh, even with the stripes and the yellows and the reds, they almost have this light sheen of red that is all over their body. They are phenomenal, uh, these particular ones that came in this week. So if you have a little larger bodied fish and you've been worried about getting small clown loaches, these, while not show quality in terms of size, they are show quality for their size. Beautiful, beautiful clown loaches this week. Okay, while well, time is running out to get fish in your ponds for the season, uh, large comets, shabunkins, in every size and variety came in this week. A lot of nice sized pool comets as well. Uh, all of these fish are in great shape with great color um, and have lots of different markings. Probably some of the prettiest common pond fish that are not koi that I've gotten in this year. If you've been in the market or want to put some fish in your pond before it gets too cold, uh, these would be some non-koi-like fish to put in there that should do very, very well. Okay, so it's very rare that I start with clownfish, and we've got a good bit of clownfish that came in, but we have one that is unbelievable. Uh, his markings actually show a smiley face on the right side of his body. It is, I can't tell you how many clownfish we sell and have come through this store to not get something as crazy as this guy that came in. Uh, absolutely phenomenal and a phenomenal marking. Just 
I, I just can't say enough about it. So I'm leading off with this particular clownfish. We have lots of clownfish right now if you're in the market for one, but uh, we've never seen one like this and probably never will again. Okay, I uh, got in a really nice leopard grass this week. I love leopard grasses because they will typically go in reef tanks. Uh, they're great to sometimes eat little little uh, pollock of worms, worms, uh, bristle worms, things like that. Uh, they can be a little erratic, uh, but they have a lot of color. They come in a lot of different colors, and they're a very, very hardy fish. A fish we haven't had in a while, a porcupine puffer just came in the other day, and I wanted to show it because it was the first fish I ever had in salt water and what made me set up a salt water tank. What really made me set up a salt water tank was because I wanted an octopus. But these little guys are so cute, I got them before I could even put the octopus in the tank. Uh, these are a hardy fish that are fairly long lived. They stress a little hard when they first come in. Uh, they're very aware of their surroundings and their owners and they're very personable. Uh, yes, they balloon into a big porcupine round ball if they get scared and we're not going to let this little guy do that. But I did want to show you as he is a pretty small specimen that came in and is doing pretty well, even though he's a little shy for the camera. Two fish, three fish that I actually have hanging out in this tank together are an odd combination. A blue spot Fiji puffer that is great. Uh, the Bursa Trigger, which is kind of a variation of the Picasso Trigger with a giant black dot on either side. Um, and a Swiss Guard Basilette, which just ran off but is coming back. Now the Basilette's great for a reef. The Puffer and the Trigger, not, not much so. Uh, triggers are aggressive, and while this little guy is cute and cuddly right now, he will grow up to be fairly mean. Uh, your Blue Spot Puffer is part of the Toby Puffer family. Uh, he's not going to get very big as far as a puffer and he'll tolerate corals and things like that but he will eat small invertebrates so you might need a fish only or a species only tank but a lot of personality a beautiful fish beautiful color and not very expensive price if you've got a small saltwater tank a small saltwater nano tank uh, it pays to have cool little fish that aren't going to get very big this flame back pygmy angel is just such a fish uh, it's great, it's very, very hardy, it's very long-lived, and it doesn't get big. It'll stay small, uh, great with gobies, uh, blennies, any type of dragonets, uh, even, even smaller species of tangs and things like that. It is a great fish with a lot of color that's very hardy and goes in a lot of small situations. One fish that will not always grab your attention just based on its singular color is the pajama cardinal. However, when you see it in a group, when you see a whole bunch of them together and how they hang loosely in the water and kind of group around a structure, whether it be a piece of your reef or a bundle of algae, they are a phenomenal fish. There are not a lot of fish you can school in salt water both because of the size tank that you need to do it and because of the biological stability of most salt, the average saltwater tank. Uh, pajama cardinals, however, are one of those fish that do not use up a lot of that biological capacity and you can keep them in a group. They don't typically fight with each other uh, unless you have one or two specific ones that will go after each other. They look great in a group, they fill up a lot of space, and will grab your attention in almost any saltwater tank. I've got some Nasiria snails this week. A lot of you have been asking about them, and I haven't had them in the last few weeks. Uh, right now, this is, the, this is my number one favorite sand sifter. Uh, just because of how it churns up the sand, you can't get a real great picture of them because they're on the glass, but as soon as the lights came on this morning, they were out hunting food. They actually keep themselves buried in the sand. When some food hits the water or they get excited, the whole sand starts erupting, which is really cool to watch in your own aquarium. So they do put on a show, which most fish don't, and they actually serve a fantastic purpose. They're very inexpensive and very, very valuable to have. Uh, nothing in this hobby is probably more personable than gobies are. Uh, maybe blennies could be argued the same, uh, maybe even the flame hawk fish, but this particular pink spot watchman is a great conversation piece. 
It's a lot of color. It's going to inhabit one part of the sand bed where it's going to make a little bit of a home. It's going to be inquisitive, and even though it's fairly small, it's got a lot of color punch, and it's going to entertain you. Gobies and blennies are great for this reason, and if they can be a fish species that are that's easily overlooked because of some larger more colorful saltwater fish but for me you could have a whole tank of nothing but gobies and blennies and have one of the coolest tanks imaginable there are very few shrimp that are as ornate as the harlequin shrimp now the reason we keep the harlequin shrimp is very simple uh, they eat starfish now we don't want them eating our good starfish but there are some problematic starfish that can be in a tank in mass that can cause problems with some of your corals and this would be the reason for having a shrimp like this. Uh, they're really cool, they're an incredible conversation piece and uh, we got one. I got asked about this last week so I brought one in for a customer. Move Mandarin. Okay, the pom-pom crab. Why is it called a pom-pom crab? Because it walks around with pom-poms. Uh, it is a very ornate crab, very similar in ornateness to the harlequin shrimp I just showed you but almost never have these guys in. While we have more saltwater on the way, I'm gonna end the saltwater with the squareback antheus because I've got one this week, and when I have them, I like to show them. This is a great fish for your reef tank. It's not in my top five, but it probably is in my top 10, at least top 15. It does very well if fed often, and it is a beautiful, beautiful fish that stays out in the open that's just phenomenal. Oh look, I'm back at the BioCubes. Uh, to end the video, just want to remind you again about the giveaway. And uh, you, while the fair is going on, if you come in any day during the fair, you get not one, but three tickets to win the BioCube. So come by and see us, come by and see all the new stuff. This is the time of year, ironically, where we get in all the new products that we ordered way back in February and March. Uh, all the new stuff starts trickling in with the Christmas season. And while I hate to even think about Christmas this early, it's on and it's a fact. So come by and see us here at Fishy Business. God bless and have a great weekend. We'll be back next week.